if any of you can adapt this philosophy. And I, I think, uh, honestly, it could, it could change your professional life or the way you see things. The, what I perceived to be a job interview was an audition, right? It was, it was, it makes sense. They're auditioning, they're, they're going to produce a television show or a commercial or a movie or a play or whatever it is. And they need to hire actors to do so, right? So I used to think that, well, I'm going in there to try to get a job. But when you put yourself in a position of need or want, what happens is that you relinquish power and control over to some unknown entity. It just evaporates out of you if you need and want something. You are not in a position of control. If you need and want that job, it'll show, it'll seep out, and people will be able to tell that there's a need or want there. Nobody wants to hire someone who actually needs a job. We want to hire people who are confident in what they're doing and saying and selling of themselves. Do you know the feeling when you give something to a, another person, let's say it's a present, and you're really excited because your friend is going to really love this present. They needed a scarf and they're complaining about how cold it is. And here it is. And they open it up and they, oh my God, this is what I need. It makes us feel great. Whether you're donating to a charity or actually on a soup line or helping, helping someone, it, it makes us feel empowered to give, right? That's the same point of view you need to take into that room. I'm here to give you something, something of value. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because you can't look at it in a conceited sort of self-centered way. My gift is so valuable to you, man. You are so lucky. I'm giving you a gift. Yes. You're welcome. It's not at all that. It, it is a quiet confidence. So it's an actor. That it changed everything for me. I went, oh, I'm not here to get a job. I'm here to do a job. Subtle difference, enormous effect. But you, if I ask every one of you if you were talented, you better say yes. And it's and I don't want to hear the false modesty. Well, I, you know, I, I, if you're doing that, if you're doing the dance of mm, well, I can't release it, then. You don't belong in this profession. Sorry, but you, you have to develop a set. And it's, again, it's not being boastful. It's just saying, yes, I'm talented. And, and I own that. And I, and I value my talent. So when I go into a room to pitch a story as a director or a writer or an actor to an audition, I am here to give you something. It may be the solution to your problem. But that's up to you. All I'm doing is giving you an option. I used to be very competitive. I used to look at someone in my age group and go, that fucker is really good. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he here? Oh man, okay, oh, okay. he's good too. I've seen his work. And you could, you could make yourself crazy with all that because, because I'm here to get a job and they're trying to get my job so it's like, it's positioning and the testosterone comes out or whatever, the sense of competition. When I adapted this new philosophy, that all went. It all disappeared. So I didn't claim ownership on that role. It wasn't mine. I'm, I'm doing this or part and I'm presenting it. I'm done. So if I heard a friend got a job that I also, it, it wasn't mine. So I could honestly celebrate my friend's job. That's what you want. This is what's going to sustain you through the year, through 37 years. If you don't make this change, a little seed of resentment will start to turn and it becomes, it starts to plant itself. And pretty soon it's a plant and a tree and a forest of resentment and anger. And you will be you will self-implode because you have not given over. 
the idea that if someone else gets a job that you auditioned for or you pitched and it's it's caving you in as a person, you need help. Start now and adapt this philosophy. It cleanses your spirit. Man. It's so cool. I get a lot of questions. How do you start? How do you become an actor? How do you do it? And my easy answer is act. Find a place to act. I don't care if it's uh, community theater, stage, student films, wherever, whenever, act. Don't wait for a phone call to, to have them, you know, some phantom person call you and say, ah, we need just your type. You have to be very diligent and seek out those opportunities and create the opportunities for yourself. I enjoy talking about my experience because it is not the norm. Everybody thinks, wow, you gotta go, you have to be in high school drama and plays and like that, and I wasn't. I was a jock. I just, I had no intention of being an actor. I wanted to be a baseball player. And I would have been a baseball player except for one little thing, talent. Go to an audition with the idea that you're going to get some kind of fantastical immediate feedback. Uh, go do your job and leave. No one is ever going to hire someone for a job because they need it. No casting director will ever say, that person really needs a job, let's hire them. No, they're going to hire the person who's best suited for the job. So in order for you not to show any desperation, go do your job and go home. You, you are going to be in tremendous competition when you come out here. There's going to be clones of you when you come out here. So in order for you to realize that you're not going to get every audition that you really want, you have to say, it's okay. I'm learning. I, I, I did my work. I went into that office and I gave them my interpretation. There it is. And I did well. I did my best. There's one other element that you need to become successful. And it's the elusive element. And that is luck. Everyone needs luck. There is no successful career without luck. Getting a, a successful series like being struck by lightning, it was incredibly lucky. And let me just tell you a little, uh, just a quick little story about that. The year that I got Malcolm in the Middle, I had tested for two other pilot series, one at NBC and one, another one at Fox, and I didn't get it. It was between me and two other guys on the NBC one, and I didn't get that one. Went to Fox a week and a half, two weeks ago, later, and did it again. Three days after that, I get this call from Malcolm in the Middle to play the dad. To, that hits, it becomes a big success, and that's where I went. Had I gotten those other jobs, one of those other jobs, I would have done the pilot, neither one of those shows sold, and I would have been looking for another job. So it takes that kind of luck and faith that it's going to work for you. And sometimes when you don't get a job, it means maybe there's something that's really right for me right around the corner. I think there is a truth in the saying that you have to know when it's your time. And sometimes, you know, people go through their awkward moments in high school and they feel gangly and they're not, you know, they're not sure of themselves and things. This seems to be my time. It waited a while, but uh, <laughs> I'm glad it's here. If you get success, later in life, you're, you're more mature, hopefully. I mean, that's the plan. In fact, someone told me that there's this Chinese proverb that says, may you reach uh, fame and fortune early on in life. And it's not intended to be favorable. It's a, a curse yeah, because they, they don't feel that you can handle that. And the biggest curse would be if you had something and lost it, as opposed to never having it at all. Uh, determined that I was going to be a, a professional actor was that I just thought, what a joy that would be if I could make my living as an actor. And that was my threshold. I would, oh, if I could just make a living as an actor. And I've been doing that since I was 24 years old. And uh, I was very fortunate to get that and to have that become a part of my life.